boom what is up guys welcome back to another video and welcome to our i would say sunday evening devotional at five o'clock but it's actually now monday evening it's accidentally a day late i do apologize for that it's on me um got a little busy racing super busy this weekend got caught up in some stuff but nevertheless right around 24 hours a day late we are here for the 33rd i believe 33rd weekly devotional here on the youtube channel Staying strong here, continuing our second part of a three-part series, focusing right around this time of the year, of course, on biblical love and what that looks like and what that entails. Last week, obviously, if you watched, we entailed what an Ephesians 5 man was and how we as men, primarily speaking to last week, or as women looking, seeking to find an Ephesians 5 man to marry or to date, what to look for and what qualities to find in that. This week is for the women, for the ladies. Um, Proverbs 31 is our, actually our focus this week. Um, and obviously next week as we cover, we'll be encompassing the entire series and wrapping it up with 1 Corinthians 13. But this week, Proverbs 31, you guys all know it. Very famous chapter of the Bible, very famous set of verses. Um, I almost chuckled myself a little bit just because of the the emphasis, I guess, that um, this verse has had, at least in different church groups and stuff between young men and I, like just repeating specifically what you're going to find tonight, Proverbs 31.10, who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies. And just that, just that whole sentiment of, you know, me and some single friends of mine just cackling it up, just making a joke about when we're going to find a virtuous woman. But anywho, I digress. Um, before we jump in, reminder, prayer request, first link down in the description below. <clears throat> and we got 21 verses to cover tonight. I'm not going to be covering all 21. Kind of have, though, a little, I wouldn't call it an exhaustive list, but definitely some characteristics that I do want to kind of highlight and emphasize tonight. Um, <clears throat> but we'll go starting in Proverbs chapter 31, verse number 10. If you guys have turned there in your Bibles by now, that would be wonderful. And here we go. Getting right into it here. Verse number 10. Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies? The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax, and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant ships, she bringeth her food from afar. She riseth also white as yet night, and giveth meat to her household and a portion of her maidens. She considereth a field and buyeth it, with all the fruit of her hands she planteth a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength, and strengtheneth her arms. She perceived that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands of the spindle, and her hands hold the distaff. She stretcheth out her hand to the poor, yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow of her household, for all of her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen, and selleth it, and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not in the bread of idleness. Her children arise up, and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. So that's really the bulk. That is the, that's the chapter right there. The first nine verses don't really pertain to our study tonight, but verses 10 through 31 cover the virtuous woman. Proverbs 31 verses 10 through 31 cover that. And the biblical expectations, the biblical layout, blueprint map, you could call it, of what a woman of virtue, and for those of you that might not know, virtuous virtue meaning having good qualities, having good morals or standards, really speaks on that moral compass. So these verses kind of lay out the blueprint of what a morally sound, morally encompassed, virtuous woman should look like in her day-to-day -day life, in her actions, in her lifestyle, in her marriage. <clears throat> and as I just want to reiterate this once again, as I said last week, especially on this topic, I am in no way, shape, or form an expert. I'm just simply going expositorily, and doing a brief exposition on this passage and seeing what the Bible says. Because I, as a man, obviously do not have the perspective that women might have and vice versa. 
on certain things like this. But simply, as it has been for our entire devotional series, we have to go not on what I think or not what on Pastor Bob down the road thinks, but we have to go on what the Word of God thinks. And so I'm going to go through briefly here. This is not an exhausted list, but there are some characteristics and some attributes that I would like to highlight. And there is quite a few. Um, so just hold on real tight um, and really just hone in here because these are numerous qualities that I do want to point out from the text that we find on what a virtuous woman is. Last week, there's only like really three that we found from Ephesians 5, or at least it stood out to me, two or three. This is much more than that. And we're just going to get into it and go with it um, and just see what the text has to say. So the first thing that I really find going down to verse 11 is that a virtuous woman can be relied upon and trusted. Verse 11, the heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. I think it's no secret that a virtuous woman, a good of a woman of good morals and good standards and good attributes in that realm, um, I think it's obvious that the woman would have to be trustful. It has to be a trustworthy individual. It would have to be somebody that you could trust, that you could confide in, that you can rely on, that's a dependable person. That's a very important characteristic and quality for both male and females in biblical relationships and marriage today. But especially as it pertains to a virtuous woman, from the husband's perspective, he should have some level of trust because she is trustworthy and because this virtuous woman is able to be trust, lives a life that is good and just and holy and acceptable and has a good moral sound compass that dictates her actions. And that kind of filters in the factor of trust there naturally. So you can be relied upon and trusted as a virtuous woman. Secondly, there's actually two verses that bring this up. A virtuous woman will help encourage and do good to the husband. Verses 12 and 23 here. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. And then verse 23, her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. Kind of like we said with trusting, it's important as... For honestly, for both male and female, and some of these can be applied honestly for both, but even specifically very expositorily laid out in the text, these qualities of a virtuous woman, obviously these here, she will do him good and not evil. And then even in verse 23, her, her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. If you are a virtuous woman, I would say chances are, if you're hedging your bets, <clears throat> that you are someone that does good and that encourages and that strives to do good and do good things. And I think you might be asking, what is what does this mean to do good? And what, to do good to the husband and encourage and all that. I think it's obviously just laid out in the Word of God. And it's not just one necessarily set of answers. But I think if you are trustworthy and you do encourage and do good, I think those kind of coincide and go hand in hand. And really just emphasize your day-to-day -day actions. Just as these next set of verses do. This place, This is several verses. This is actually four that I found here that a virtuous woman will help provide for her family and husband. Major emphasis on provision here, and you'll see in a moment. Verse 13 down to 15. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant ships and bringeth her food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. Also, verse 17. She girdeth her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. And then in verse 27. She looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. Four verses just out of the 21 we find here put on an emphasis of provision and providing for the family and for the husband. And just briefly, um, this passage I would like to point out because I'm doing a Bible study in here in this semester. And so it's kind of a verse that came to my, um, came to my mind, especially even as it pertains to, to the men just briefly here. Because I just would like to make a point that, yes, these are the qualities, even as we said last week for what an Ephesians 5 man is. Those qualities can be tied into a Proverbs 31 woman and the same here because with an emphasis on provision, obviously that's huge. And even just this past week, I was reading this verse, 1 Timothy 5, verse 8. But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. 1 Timothy 5, 8. An infidel being an enemy of God, basically saying from a man's perspective, just as we find clearly in this text, if you not provide for your family. If you lack provision, you lack the proper things that your family needs to get through, to get by, um, and to go about this life. You've denied the faith and you're worse than an infidel. You're worse than an enemy of God. If you lack provision for your family 
and for those that love and trust and rely on you. And so similarly here, there's a strong emphasis for the Proverbs 31 women that they do work with their hands, that they work, they provide, they provide for the family. Provision is both important for the husband and the wife in a blueprint, a biblical blueprint, blueprint of marriage at least. I'm going to go kind of quickly through these just to not run too much on time. Um, verses 16 and 21 highlight that a Proverbs 31 woman will not only look to the current needs of their family, but also to the future. Verse 16, she considereth the field and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hand, she planteth a vineyard. Verse 21, she is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. Major emphasis here on, yes, providing now and meeting their current needs, as we just saw a few verses ago, but in the future as well. And preparing your family, having them set up now in, the, in, in today's world, in the present, but also setting them up long-term in the future through provision and through different things. There's a numerous amount of ways you can set your family up for long-term growth, long-term success and blessing and financial, economic um, stability, whatever that looks like from each family to family. So that's also, that's also an emphasis here that we find in the text. Another one, probably the second, I guess actually four verses here as well, tied in with provision, is a hard worker. Verses 18 to 19, she perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands at the spindle, and her hands hold it as staff. And then also going down, verses 24 and 27, she maketh fine linen and selleth it, and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. And then verse 27, she looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Similar with male and female, in a God-designed plan for dating and for marriage, both the male and female provide and work hard. Those are two things, at least in these last couple weeks, studying of what biblical love looks like individually and cumulatively. You got to be able to provide and you got to be able to work hard. There's something, there's a biblical principle and characteristic when it comes to providing and working hard. Verses 20 and 26 highlight the kindness of a virtuous woman. Verse 20, she stretcheth out her hand to the poor, yea, she reaches forth her hands to the needy, Going down to 26, she openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. It's important to be kind to people, and not just to anybody, but even in verse 20, like people to the poor, to all people. That's just who you are as a person. It's your characteristic. It's your personal attribute. You are kind to all people. That's something that the Bible emphasizes. is. You've even seen it, if you've read through the Gospels recently, which is what I've been going through. Jesus ministers and is kind and works miracles to all people. That's who his earthly ministry was to, was not just to the rich, was not just to the leaders of the day, but to all people, poor, rich, broken, whole, all people. And just as it says, to be kind to all people. Almost towards the end here, verse 22 highlights a Proverbs 31 woman that provides for her own needs. She maketh herself coverings, coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Being self-sufficient, being able to provide for yourself and for your family and being able to do things for not just yourself, but for all people. Because if we can't provide for our own selves, chances are we're not going to be able to provide for a husband and some kids and support a church and go serve at a church, do different things like that. At the root of all of it, at the root of all service, you have to be able to provide for your own self. Verse 26, we also just viewed this a few moments ago, talking about the wisdom of a virtuous woman. She openeth her tongue or openeth her mouth with wisdom being wise, being educated, being knowledgeable, having that experience and just living in a way that is wise, not not saying foolish things, not having foolish actions or morals, living in a way that is wise and that wisdom obviously coming out in your words and in your actions and in your day-to-day -day life. Two more here briefly. Verse 28, a virtuous woman is respected and relied upon. Her children arise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. It's important that there is a sense of reverence and respect and dependence upon one another in God's design for biblical household and marriage and dating. Each person has to be able to provide for themselves, yes, but rely on each other, encourage each other, and respect each other, and ultimately push each other, as we said last week, towards the cross at Calvary. All of this has to point back towards the cross, or ultimately it's not Christ-centered. That's just kind of how it works. You have to have that biblical perspective in your relationships and in your marriage that brings everything back out to the cross. 
And finally, verse number 30, a virtuous woman is a godly woman. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. And I think this is a good one to end on because even last week in our study in Ephesians, I think we see, yes, as we talked about, we saw an emphasis um, on provision and hard work in both these texts. But I think above all, a virtuous woman or an Ephesians 5 man truly is not, it doesn't have a certain characteristic of physical stature of as I just said, favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. It's not focusing so much. A Proverbs 31 woman and a Ephesians 5 man doesn't necessarily have to be some model, Met Gala-esque model, you know, drop dead, beautiful human being that is perfect in your eyes. Ideally, hopefully they are, and hopefully you do have an attraction to them physically. But above all, the Bible puts an emphasis on the spiritual aspect of somebody. And the spiritual beauty and the spiritual maturity is much more important than any attribute physically that a male or female could ever offer up and so being a godly woman being a godly man that's what a proverbs 31 and ephesians 5 man are you have to be godly and you have to have that christ-centered attitude and that perspective and ultimately that's going to come out in your marriage and in your dating and in your relationships whether it be a proverbs 31 or ephesians 5 individual as i've said last week pointing everything back to the cross having god having christ at the center and as we're going to talk about last week foreshadowing a little bit you could say your relationship accumulates with both of you pushing each other closer to Christ and serving God collectively. That person, whether it be a male, if you're a female, or if you're a female, it be a male, should ultimately push you closer to Christ. And we're going to talk about this some next week. But I hope you all enjoyed. I um, hope this made sense. hope you guys kind of took some things away. Whether it be a male looking for this, you know what to look for in your biblical dating and relationships. Or a female, this is how you ought to live and this is how you ought to be going about your day-to-day -day. and this these qualities that we've emphasized today should be qualities that you take on every single day of your life if you strive to be a virtuous woman and strive to be somebody of good morals and good standards and good values so i hope you all enjoyed i apologize once again for being a day late we'll be back on schedule next week be sure to like comment and subscribe i'm going to pray us out and that'll be it dear lord what do you think for this day God, we thank you for another opportunity just to continue this series. God, just to study your word and see what it says, specifically this week for a Proverbs 31 woman. God, and just for this study on relationships and for your biblical design of love, we're continuing to try to study that and uncover that, God, and really figure out what you would have us to be individually and collectively, God, in our relationships and our marriage. And so, God, we pray for that. We pray for everybody under the sound of my voice, Lord, that you'd help them to be this virtuous woman, God, if applicable, or if male, God, I pray you'd help them to find a virtuous woman in their relationships and, and their marriage, God, and that that would be Christ-centered and honoring unto you. So, God, we love you. We thank you for what you're doing for us. God, forgive us of our sins, and we'll give you all the praise and the glory this week and all that we do, for it's in your Son, Jesus Christ, let me pray. Amen. That is all for me. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you in this Thursday and Sunday. Don't want to miss it. Thank you all for the support. God bless.